I am so excited today to be going live with Georgia. So let's see if she is available yet. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to use AI for your business um, and how to use it to create social media content. It is the a big topic of conversation now, right? Like um, people are talking about using AI for all sorts of things. So um, let's see. Uh, anyways, I'm just waiting for her. Oh, there she is. Um, okay, so she's going to be joining me in just a second. Sometimes uh, going live gets a little bit wonky. So, and it should be ready to go in just a second here. In case you have never gone live with a guest or ever gone live before, um, if you want to go live with a guest where you guys are side by side, uh, you both have to go live and then you invite the other person to be a host with you. Um, so hopefully she'll pop up here in just a second and we can go ahead and get started. Let's see here. You also have to both be following each other. Um, and hopefully we'll see her in just a second. All right, like I said, today we're going to be talking about how to use AI in your marketing strategy. So I'd love to know in the comments if that's something that you've tried before. Um, have you ever tried to use something like Chat ChatGPT or uh, even Jasper AI? Um, a lot of different platforms have added AI as an option. I was putting together my um, I was putting together my new systems for my agency on Notion and Notion was asking me um, if I wanted to use AI for my system so that was really cool because I could kind of tell them what it was that I was looking for and they could start writing out the outline or it could start writing out the outline uh, which I thought was really really cool. Um, the other thing uh, the other thing that I just saw on TikTok, I saw somebody create a video about it. Oh, here she is. Um, actually hired a human to do a job for them that they couldn't do. So I thought that was really cool. Hi, how are you? Oh, great. How are you? Yay, good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm so excited. I know uh, sometimes getting it started is a little bit confusing, but I'm so happy that you're here. Um, so I was just speaking a little bit about um, like asking if anybody has been using AI already, since that's going to be our topic of conversation today. So please drop in the chat um, if you've been using AI for your marketing or for your business, or um, if you haven't, maybe why. But let's start off. Why don't you introduce yourself um, and what you normally do, and then kind of like why we're gonna why why we're talking about AI? Yes, I would love to. So I am Georgia Mountford Blake. I love that we're also matching in yellow today. <laughs> um, a marketing strategist who specializes in sort of risky industries like uh, spaces that get stigmatized or censored. I work with businesses in, I, I started off in the pole dance and like burlesque and boudoir, but it's moved into all sorts of fringe industries where there's regulations or there's um, <clears throat> societal pushback or whatever that mm -hmm. maybe it hard for the business to actually get their voice heard and yeah. get their voice out. So. You are your assistant creator, right? Like you like to make stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember like blowing my father's brains with the stuff that I would do on the computer, the how the family computer where he'd come or come back from work and I'd be like, Dad, look what I can do. And I told oh him God. um I I started doing speech recognition stuff on my PC in my bedroom when I was like 
eight or nine. Oh my um, gosh. I taught myself how to build a website when I was 11 because I wanted to have my own Harry Potter fan site because the ones I visited, <laughs> I was like, let me at that too. So yeah. tech has always been a passion of mine. And now it's really cool to see how accessible it is to everybody. Like I am yeah. a nerd and I went and learned coding, you know, when I was in my preteens, but not all of us had that luxury. So yeah, that we can now, some of the stuff that I've been kind of uh, promoting forever now actually is achievable for your everyday business owner. So that's really exciting. I love that. Okay. So two things, um, since we're both hosts, I can't see if people leave comments on yours on your side. And so if they do be sure and let me know so that we can address it. Cause I can only see the comments on my side, <laughs> but, okay. um, no. things I've learned. Um, and then, uh, also I just want to touch really quickly in case you didn't catch, um, the marginal industry thing. Cause I think there's some business owners that don't even quite understand that they are in an industry that is a little bit harder to market. So I know you talked about, um, like anything that gets kind of sexualized, basically like pole dancing or um, things like that. But there's some other industries that maybe people don't know about, like alcohol, CBD, anything like that, even like real estate, um, government, politics. Is there anything that I'm missing out that maybe somebody would be like, oh my gosh, that's me and I had no idea? Oh, yeah, totally. We did, um, I held an event last week. Um, oh, yeah. Street, and one of the things we did was like, let's just brainstorm all of the different industries that hit these barriers and there's way more than you think so yeah cbd cannabis that's really really edgy because it depends on what state you're in and a lot of things yeah. cross lines and that's confusing the platforms don't want to get anybody thrown in jail or whatever so you know oh, we should be careful about what we say too because it can get us kicked off the live <laughs> oh, true exactly that's the point right like it's hard to market yourself when you're in these yeah because there are these red flag words and every Um, being, um, spiritual type services. You might like. There's nothing necessarily inherently um, borderline about um, wealth generation or spiritual services or anything. But those are spaces that bad actors scam people through. Yeah. So those places spaces become marginalized for that reason because they've got like heavier restrictions than your regulated and controlled substances. Mm -hmm. I Gosh. Even, um, I've even gotten like talking about, uh, one of my clients background, some of their, um, history was, it, uh, it wasn't like sunshine and lollipops and it was just words that we had said that triggered, uh, triggered yeah. it. So it's just something to consider. Um, and I, and just thinking about that, we could get kicked off based on what we say. I don't really want to go too far into it. And I'm really excited about the AI topic. So I have um, some questions for you, but then I also went to chat GPT and asked it to ask you some more questions, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but I want to get started off at just saying like, is AI a good resource for business owners when it comes to their marketing or just putting together their business in general? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people are like scared or maybe a little suspect about it, you know? Look, it's a tool. I know that's kind of the buzz phrase. Like it's a tool, but it is. So if if Google search is helpful to you, if uh, Wikipedia is helpful to you, if a team member or an intern is helpful to you, then AI is going to be helpful to you because it sort of combines all those things. It's got access to the whole database of information, collective human knowledge, depending which tool you're using. You know, they're trained on yeah. different things. But think of it like a, a great phrase I heard someone use was something like AI is at the level at the moment that it can effectively imitate a average motivated average skilled worker so it's not a place yet where like you're really passionate people they they just are way ahead of ai at this point people who are really into their topic and who are creative and energized and enthusiastic but your everyday kind of like paper pushing data entry type average 
motivation level and skill level, that kind of stuff is now things that solopreneurs and freelancers like us and our clients can access without having to necessarily pay for a human wage, which is more a human wage. Yeah. And the AI is now available. A lot of people were choosing between like doing it themselves or not doing it. It's not like yeah. people were having employees that they're now getting rid of. That's totally happening in bigger spaces, but yeah. um, that kind of in our space, it's not about that. It's about leveling up and getting access to things that we previously couldn't even afford because we couldn't bring on team and that sort of stuff. I love that. That's so great. Um, if you're enjoying this conversation, please double tap the screen. We really appreciate your likes and it helps our life get in front of more people that might be interested in it. Um, okay. So what is it like one of the best examples or coolest things that you've seen done so far with this like outbreak of AI use? Hmm. I think some of the coolest stuff that I'm seeing is people using AI to process their own thoughts, which is really yeah. not what, uh, like my first instinct was like, oh, let's make content with it. Let's, you know, let's let's create output that yeah. we blogs and we can make into social captions. But then what's come out of it is that we started asking questions like, um, let's say I had, a someone coming on a discovery call with me I can ask AI what are some questions that someone who's in this industry might ask me on our first call so I can come prepared and it's like yeah. narration like that actually using it as a sounding board for what am I missing like what should I be thinking about what are the dot yeah. points that I should research how would you reply if someone said this you can do that live like on a call I don't know how many um, business owners watching this now or on the replay do that face-to-face -face customer service stuff but if you're mm -hmm. you get a tricky question you can like on the go ask yeah. help on how to respond and that's yeah cool. Yeah, that is so cool. There's so, it's just so many examples and so versatile. I saw um, before you got on, I saw a video either today or yesterday where they were talking about how AI actually ended up hiring a human to help them with the recaptcha that they got stuck on getting through. And they went and like hired a whole human to get the captcha done for them. So that is probably the craziest thing that I've seen it be done it <laughs> AI work. I, I'm hitting a block I know I need a human for this part <laughs> yeah exactly exactly I'm sorry my dog likes to eat toilet paper and the other dog does too and they're both excited because they found some mm -hmm. um it, it was terrible during COVID I'm like seriously you can't take my toilet paper uh okay so what AI platforms are you currently using or would you recommend to people well, definitely chat GPT. It's the new kid on the block and it's getting more and more powerful all the time. I love it because of that conversational. Yeah. Approach. There's a lot of AI tools inside Canva that I highly recommend. Yeah. Or a uh, text to image where you can describe like the stock photo that you want and it'll generate it. Um, I use the um, slide outline to slide deck feature in Canva so I just literally oh yeah that I want to do for a presentation and it makes the presentation um and magic right is in Canva but the equivalent kind of thing in notion if you're someone who uses yeah as project management or content creation or just like your creation space definitely check out the AI stuff in there because I used it recently to pull out action steps from a meeting audio. So I gave it the transcription and I said, summarize this with action steps. And it was brilliant. So That's amazing. That is totally amazing. If you're watching this um, live and you have any other uh, AI that you've been using, we would love to know about it. So please drop it in the chat um, and so that we can share it also. Uh, I did mention um, Notion 
earlier before you got on as one uh, that I've seen used or that I was kind of playing around with a little bit. I probably use ChatGPT the most and I really love it because I can, um, I saw somebody use it in this way one time and now I haven't gone back, but I really start like by giving it context of like, imagine that you are like this person, like how would you do this for this or whatever? And I feel like that makes it so much more, Um, The results just so much better when you're like really, really specific with what mindset you wanted to get in. And so I feel like it's just so much better at getting like questions answered for me than uh, like Google. Like I use it too to learn more about my clients, ideal clients, since I work with a lot of like uh, brick and mortar type businesses that are really specific to their community. And like, I don't live there. And so it's like, okay, what do I need to know about the culture and the people that live in this place in the springtime? Like, you know, what are they talking about? What are they going to that sort of thing? So I think it can be really helpful for like research too. Definitely. I did a huge research, uh, mission yesterday with chat GPT. I was looking for, uh, examples of women thought leaders in activism and um, advocacy spaces. And so I said, hey, what are some women's names I should know in this space? Came back with a whole bunch. I said, okay, um, tell me more about this person. This person got some stuff back, kept digging. Then I'm like, can you please list the top 10 career highlights from this person? And when those came back, I said, tell me more about this highlight. When that came back, I said, it was in this case about being featured and being like having a documentary and whatever else. So I said, um, tell me about what steps led up to this, you know, what were some of the milestones to all on this journey? And I'm literally reverse engineering someone's success. I was like, find me yeah. that thought leader person, tell me bit by bit how they got there. What were their career yeah. have they been on? You know, what topics are they known for speaking about? So I was digging backwards. So now I one uh, one of my clients who kind of wants to do that herself yeah I love that um we just got a question so does Google have their version of AI yeah is that Bard I think that Google search released Bard or is that Microsoft's one um everybody has their equivalent is the answer yeah and giving it different names and figuring out where it fits um, yeah Google, if you just type directly into Google search, it still functions like Google search. You have to go actively to look for the Google AI equivalent if you want to get Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, Okay, so we've just talked a lot about like ways that we can use AI, but what or are there any ways or any places that a business owner really shouldn't like rely on AI to do the work for them? Yeah, I would say definitely don't rely on it for accurate information-based research yet. Um, Because um, you might have heard the phrase, it's like a a language model, like an AI language model is the, is the terminology. So what that means is it's, it's literally just emulating how people speak and what they speak about. It's not actually necessarily doing research and verifying the facts and things. It's, can okay. look at when you when you ask it a question and it comes back with stuff from wiki and and whatever it looks accurate but it is known for uh what they call hallucinating which is when it just tells you stuff that sounds like a conversation speech based response but isn't really based in truth so the workaround for that is to kind of do that reverse engineer thing that i talked about get specific ask for references ask for examples um and go and make sure that you're doing that fact checking yeah um use it for editing use it for changing the tone of voice use it for converting stuff from um a blog post to an email script don't use it necessarily as the source of truth got it that's really important i think um but so don't use it to write your research paper, which I have seen that there's a lot of problems in like the high school and university level, which I could totally see because like, why spend a bunch of time writing a research paper when you can just type it into chat GPT or, um, you know, 
uh, Jasper and it'll just pop something out for you. But I guess having to have resources is probably really important <laughs> in that sense. That's something that's coming, you know, that's a lot, what a lot of people are saying is that it's the lack. And so I wouldn't be surprised if in future versions and paid versions, they start getting better at citing their sources. Um, but like I said, because it, sometimes they're not, pulling from sources they're they're following language models and so they they're like I don't I didn't cite anything I just made this up so yeah oh my so, gosh but that's, going, uh, yeah the that's essay, really crazy essay thing is so funny um because I remember the equivalent when I was at university we didn't have AI tools but literally there were websites um this is pre Spotify and Netflix mm -hmm. so, go to download torrents of music and videos, right? It's digital piracy, but there wasn't really an alternative until yeah. comes these, these platforms. So there were websites like that that you could actually torrent essays. Like you could yeah. get people's university material. Like that's we, everyone shared that on a peer. It's a little bit easier and it probably feels less um, like it, it seems like the good kids would be more likely to do that versus like, you know, um, because even then what had to happen, right, is that then there was AI that was created that could take a, somebody's paper and run through it and see if it was found someplace else on the Internet. So you're right. That has been around for a while. Um, but it's just a matter of it having to adjust it for for something yeah. like this. Um, OK, so it's in kind of worms too. like, OK, if writing isn't a skill that a human needs to like empower themselves what else can we teach people like you know yeah. what education be if these things are no longer things you need to be educated on like the you'll never have a calculator in your pocket thing that all of us right do, and now we do so yeah i kind of like um i know how disruptive it is and how i don't want to downplay the drama but i like the challenge that we're as a kind of species being faced with like we have to reinvent stuff and think bigger and that's kind of cool yeah that's totally true that is so true and that's the life of an entrepreneur right is like thinking outside the box coming up with creative solutions to things and I think I'm somebody who um I don't get scared of what's coming instead it's like okay well how is this going to change it's like we can't stop what's happening like we can't stop ai from getting and evolving to the point that it is and so then it's just like how are we going to adjust to it or what is going to change or what how is life going to look different how is business going to look different that sort of thing so rather than being scared instead just accepting and <laughs> looking for the next thing i guess yeah Okay, we have just a few more minutes. And so the last thing that I really want to do also because my computer turned off. So now I can't even pull up my I kept trying to keep it on. It's it's annoying. Um, but what I really like to know is like, so let's say somebody um, has their business, right? They have a small business and it, they want to use AI to help them generate their marketing content and their marketing plan. So what are some steps that they could take? Um, what are some of the platforms that they could use? Kind of walk us through that. Okay, let's, um, well, gee, where are you at to begin with is the question for the business. Owner. Yeah, there's, um, okay, there are there are AI platforms now um, that can help you find your target audience as in identify who they are and what their wants and needs and things are. So a lot of what I, I would recommend your day to day use of AI is going to depend on you already knowing who you're target audience is, your author is, um, and all that kind of thing. But if you don't know those things yet, don't don't think that you can't use AI actually tools for that part of things as well. Uh, let's assume that that's taken care of though, and you're someone who you've got your social media presence already, you have a website that exists, you've taken on some projects or sold some uh, products, and now you're like, right, I want to be more visible online. I want to get more... Yeah clients or make more sales, I would suggest use AI conversationally to figure out your like annual plan. Say something like, hey, 
chat GPT. Um, I give him a name every time or a different, I'm like, hey, Chad, hey, Bob, you know, <laughs> hey, dude. Of course. <laughs> I just find that more fun for myself. And it's a good mental trick. It makes me talk to- Like a person. Like a person, which makes it better. Yeah. So I would say something like, hey, Bob, um, I have a goal that by the end of this year, I will uh, actually- I'll go back to what you said. Hey, Bob, I want you to act as a marketing consultant who has experience growing businesses from 50K to 500K followers in XYZ niche. And I want you to use your knowledge of social media best practices and um, refer to successful um, online brands that give it the context like you said then yeah my first request is oh. i have a goal to achieve blah 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 by the end of the year what key milestones or sub goals should i achieve uh -huh. then pick out some that you feel like you can tackle first like you're in i'm interested in that yes i love podcasts or oh actually yeah, uh -oh, I yeah. pick out from what it gives back out of two things that are come to you and say, okay thanks bob um of the idea about growing my youtube channel what steps would you suggest for that if i only have a budget of why or what steps would you suggest if um i want to achieve that within 30 days like again specific and dig back until you get your strategy once you've got that that alone, I think, is a really powerful way to use AI. Now you've got direction. And that's one of the biggest things I'm sure you would agree with me that as a marketer, when we come in, business owners often have a lot of ideas, but not the direction on how to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I would suggest do that like once a month or at least once a quarter is use a conversational chatbot to reverse engineer your priorities for the quarter. The other thing I would suggest is using it. Yeah. And like you mentioned a couple of things there. So um, the first thing which we've talked about a couple different times is like how important it is to be very, very specific whenever you're talking to chat GPT and not like it won't give you results if you're not specific because it will. But if you're really looking for like, you know, like I'm sure you've seen videos on TikTok where people say like, Chad GPT can do this and this and this. And you're like, it's not doing that for me. It's because you're not being specific enough whenever you're asking a question. And so um, if you really want the great stuff out of it, you have to put the great stuff into it to get it out. It, it won't just like read your mind yet. Um, yeah. And then it, like you also touched on some different things that it can do. So it can write you, um, it can tell you about your ideal client. It can take your thoughts and give you direction on what you want to do. Um, but you're entering in that goal so that you can get, the, again, the good stuff out of it um, that you are trying to get out. And then um, the third thing is, is that it can be used for everything as broad as it, your marketing plan I've even seen people talk about creating their entire business plan on it. Again, they're putting a lot of really good stuff in there to get good stuff out. You can't just say like, make me a business plan. Like you could, but it's not going to be really in depth. It's not going to touch exactly what you're looking for. Um, but so, and, and then you can use it for things as granular as, can you write me an Instagram caption for this day? Because I've definitely done that. There's days where I'm like, I don't really know, like, I don't want to write another caption. I've written too many captions. So you can go to chat GPT and say, imagine that I'm a marketing uh, agency and I work with six and seven figure business owners and I want to teach them. You can't probably say TikTok because it's too new and everything is like pre 2021. Um, but you can say like, what are some, like write me an Instagram caption for this or whatever. And you can really get some, some good stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. One thing on that content creation part with getting captions, getting blog posts, getting anything uh, copywriting related, huge tip I recommend is go find some copy of your own that you already love. Maybe mm -hmm. you hired someone to write it, maybe you wrote it yourself, but if you're like, that is so totally my voice, that just was like really succinct and it resonated with my audience, copy that copy and 
say, hey, chat GPT, I want you to read the following content and describe to me the tone of voice um, and style of language that is used. Boom, put it in. When it comes back, save that. And from then on, you can uh, use that as your prompt. Hey, I want you to write a blog post in a tone of voice that is yeah. And I'm back like you. I did it for myself and it worked way better than me trying to say, be bubbly or be this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh my it- gosh. I love that. And yeah. that is so good. Um, okay. So our time is up, which I could probably talk to Georgia about this for like another hour. And I know you did a coaching call on this. Georgia is one of the coaches for the social click, which is Rachel Peterson's uh, mastermind that we're both a part of. And I did not go to it, but I'm really regretting it. <laughs> I'm pretty but- sure I could watch the replay. <laughs> but um thank you guys so much for joining us please make sure that you're following georgia and following me georgia talks about all kinds of great things on her social media but also ai and i talk about a lot of things around tiktok and business um and pacific time and i'm talking about social media for your boring business so hopefully i will see you next time see you jen bye Bye. thanks bye